But this has been like an ongoing series of mine where I'm covering this new psyop where Zionists in Israel are importing their fascist ideology in the United States. And they've already been massively successful over the last decade or so, especially with BDS bands going on in Florida and Texas and Missouri as well. And now after the Hamas uh, genocide that they're doing, now the genocide in Palestine that they're doing right now, the public opinion has shifted against Israel to the point where they say, okay, guys, we can't do this thing where you're half in and half out. You're either all in on Zionism and full-fledged anti-free speech fascism, or you're not with us, we will primary you. And obviously, all the people who are pro-Israel, all the APAC sellouts like John Fetterman and Richie Torres, they all for it. They're not going to fight them ideologically. They're going to like, whatever you say, I'm down for it. So that's my preface, CJ, because we, we just go slightly out of order. I don't want to throw your your groove off. So, uh, CJ, no, that's you, perfect. Preface, uh, Zion, it, it, Israel is importing their fascism. And the Harvard pr- president essentially went up there and said, <laughs> I don't agree with the people who are against genocide. I think they're deplorable. But aren't we supposed to follow the Constitution? Isn't that what we like? Aren't we supposed to support free speech? And she says that, and they fucking freak out, CJ. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, that me that my preface. I'm spoiling it a little bit. But I pass you, CJ. I let you continue for me. No, that's perfect. I'm glad. I'm glad we're covering. It's like 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 we we doing be doing it so long that we do this all the time, overlapping yeah. and that. But this it works out to our advantage, which is good. So let's listen to this. So now I'm gonna just rewind it from the beginning since this was part of what you were gonna cover. So let's listen to what this yeah. insanity that this lady comes says on the Crazy. Issue. Let's bring into the conversation Israel's special envoy for combating anti-Semitism, Mikhail Kotler Wunsch. Great to have you with us this morning. A Hanukkah starts tonight. We also should point out. Um, I'm just curious about your reaction. Um, we're happy that President McGill maybe saw the light and came around and put out that statement. But to say I wasn't prepared not prepared for the question about whether calling for the genocide of the Jewish people constitutes bullying on your campus is a little bit uh, of a tough one to swallow. So I'll say that I actually went to uh, brief the entire committee yesterday as a follow-up to the hearing. And I think what Rev was saying is actually the most important in the introductory um, comments. What we have to realize is the nature of the double standard actually collapses the entire principle, right? These are universities that created diversity, equity, and inclusion infrastructure that applies to everybody, except for if you're a Jew slash Zionist slash supporter of Israel. bullshit. You see there? You see there? We were going to stop it in the same place. And you see right there how she's conflating Jews and Zionists right there. She's saying slash Jews slash Zion. No, 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 no. That's completely different. Now, you go ahead, Nick. You were going to say something, too. Go ahead. No. This is a theory. I want to let I want to let it play because I want to okay. hear her, her full statement. But you guys see, they are dragging us into this fight. Why the fuck they bring they bringing black people into this shit? You know what I mean? So Zionism is a political philosophy. It's a political ideology. You believe that Jewish people have the right to commit war crimes on whatever people necessary in order to create a Jewish state. That is what Zionism is. So what she is saying is, if you don't agree on a political ideology, you're against the Jewish people and the college campus should do something against that. And she claims that there is a double standard where black people are protected. CJ, what black political (laughs) ideology is protected under the threat of suppressing the free speech? Imagine if black people actually with a serious fucking face went to CNN, MSNBC, and we proposed that anyone who does not support reparations should, should be labeled anti-black and their free speech should be suppressed. Can you imagine how fast we'll be laughed out of the building <laughs> if we advocated that, advocated that? But these, this is what unhinged Zionists are saying and trying to in, in, in export to our culture with a serious face that we got to align completely with a, a a segment of the Jewish population who believes in Zionism, and if we don't support their political aspirations, that we are some somehow anti-Semite. So if you're not if you're not for reparations, or you're or you're an anti-black bigot, if you don't support every single ass I have politically, does that make you anti-black? That is what these children 
and both parties are saying right now. Let's continue. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> right here. <clears throat> collapses the entire principle, right? These are universities that created diversity, equity, and inclusion infrastructure that applies to everybody, except for if you're a Jew slash Zionist slash supporter of Israel. That is a problem for everybody. If we collapse the infrastructure, they got congressional standard, it hearings. Protect anybody, right? Today, it's the... So not supporting genociders collapses... What are they called? DEI? Diverse and equity... So, so genociders want to be Nick included in this multi. Yeah. They want to be included in this sort of melting pot uh, of of like it's a. It is completely absurd to say that's like saying Nazism. You're you're not going to include us, DEI. That's essentially what she's saying. Let's listen some more. Unless it's, you it's, have time, let's go ahead. I like you. I like continue the Jew slash Zionist slash supporter of Israel tomorrow, it's everybody else. And so I would say we should get oh, those geez. buses onto those campuses, no matter who they enable to attack. And there's one more piece. Look, the understanding that Zionism today on campuses is considered racism. And we have to sort of address this, right? UN resolution, 1975, Soviet propaganda, Zionism is racism, is alive Soviet and propaganda. In now, I was just going to stop it on the same part, Nick. Because let's go back and just think about what was happening. What was Russia doing? Who was killing Nazis, Nick? <laughs> who was killing Nazis? So to them who recognize Nazis, they could recognize Zionism being the same. So why wouldn't Russia at the time say something like that to her point? Now, I'm just going what she says. Like we always say, let's, we could do yeah. it either way. Either Zion way, but go ahead. Go ahead. Zionists are the most shameful projectors and liars on the planet. So she claims, she's like, why do all these other groups get the, all these protections, all these special pr privileges that Jews and Zionists don't get? It's the exact opposite. They got a congressional hearing like this. <laughs> CJ, imagine if we had... What concern we had in the black community? We're like, we upset about how something's happening on the college campus. And there was a Harvard president giving a fucking testimony on the Congress the next day addressing the black community. So what they were saying is the exact opposite. They pretend they're powerless. They got all the power. You, got, you have college campuses that is pooling scholarships from pro-Palestine groups. When the fuck has black people ever had that power no. to get white racist scholarships pulled? And this is what this common tactics in Zionism. Imagine someone like, I'm against reparations, and we got their, their scholarship pulled. I'm sure there's an example of someone who's like a belligerent, fuck black people, and they probably got in trouble. But remember, they are mad because of a difference in political ideology. So there are people who are against Zionism and the existence of Israel, which is a political ideology. Imagine if you lost your scholarship and you was <laughs> retaliated against because you was against reparations, which is common, which is like 70% of white people. So now you guys see why black people especially look at this side-eyed? Let's continue. Yeah, I look at this way, very side-eyed, but let's uh, continue, like you said. Progress? on 2023 campuses, we're going to have to be able to unpack that because Zionist is the identity of the majority of Jews and many non-Jews. I cannot just- That is a bold-faced lie. That is a bold-faced lie to say uh, <laughs> Zionism is the majority view of all, most Jews. That is a bold-faced lie, but let's continue. I see the guest right there. Yeah. Let me just let her finish this that point. That Zionist pound of my identity in order to fit in and be a good Jew. This is the part I wanted you to hear that I had to text. This is the part I text you about, Nick. And that's why, and then we'll we'll get bring our guest in. This, this is unreal to me when she says this part. Jews. I cannot just shed that Zionist pound of my identity in order to fit in and be a good Jew or a good human being. And that is- I cannot of only just shed. <laughs> Doesn't this sound very um, eerily uh, to the people in the South who say they want to keep the Confederate statues and flags? Yep. I can't shed that Confederate part of my 
what does that mean? I can't. Dude, it's so, so crazy watching saying, history repeat itself like this, man. But go ahead, CJ. Yes. Yes. And I'll bring this down. We're bringing in our guests. But she's saying, I can't shed uh, that giant is part of my, my Nazi side of me in order to be a good person. So you so can't get options. rid of being a genocide, a genocidal maniac to be a good person. That was that was eye-opening to me. 